74 degrees officially in Chicago at 1045. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum presents The Howard Miller Show. Now here he is with music on records, Howard Peter Miller. Thank you very much, Joe Foss. You know, we're sitting around the studio of CBS here in Chicago, sort of figuring if our names weren't what they are, what uh, do each of us think the other one should be called? And one of the gentlemen in attendance here said, well, I think your name should be Peter. And uh, Dick Hallett, our engineer, is a Bill type. Lou Weir is more the Oscar type. I don't get that unless you look like a little silver statue. And Joe, we didn't get uh, to you yet, but I think you're sort of a Marilyn <laughs> Reginald. Well, anyway, uh, call it by any other name. It would still be as nice if you call it by the name of Wrigley Sperm and Chewing Gum, because here indeed is always a delightful treat for you and the people that you love best. Today, our guest sitting across from us is a young gentleman in the khaki uniform of Uncle Sam's great United States Armed Forces. His name is Charlie Applewhite. He's the boy that burst into the room of Mr. Milton Burl and said, I can sing, Milty. And Milty put him on the show and... This boy became a star almost overnight. You'll meet and hear the story of Charlie Applewhite in just a moment after we listen to a girl singer by the name of Vicki Nelson. Now, last Sunday, we presented the annual, the third annual Chicago Daily News Youth Rally to about 15,000 teens in Chicago Stadium. It was my happy privilege, as we've done every year, to create the entire production for the show for the talent to come into the town and then to serve as MC. And this was a young lady that uh, attractiveness on record was sufficient that we extended an invitation to her, and needless to say, she stopped the show, a real showstopper, and a wonderful little performer. Her name was Vicki Nelson, and here's her very first record she's ever made on the label Vic. It's called Like a Baby. Shiny toy like a baby. No matter what you would do, I depended on you like a baby. One thing I wonderful little girl from Philadelphia. Actually, that's her home. Now she lives in New York. She records for the label Vic. Her name, strangely enough, or paradoxically enough, is Vicki Nelson, and the record is called 
like a baby. As we were saying a moment ago, speaking of names, the name of Wrigley is a proud name because the Wrigley folks have been making chewing gum for all of the Americans and the people around the world to enjoy for a great many years. And all through those years, the consistency, the fine quality of Wrigley's spearmint is the password of the entire enterprise. And I hope that you'll allow yourself the privilege of indulging in one of my favorite pastimes, and I think maybe yours too, the pleasant relaxation of chewing Wrigley's spearmint. And if you haven't tried it yet, and I'm sure that's hardly possible, I hope that you will one of these days. And if you're a large family, there's not one single member of your family that won't be able to get that same downright deep good enjoyment. Because Wrigley Spearmint is good for you. The cleaning action of the chewing, of course, keeps your teeth clean and attractive. Keeps your breath always sweet. So why don't you enjoy, as we all do every day, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. I know you'll like it. Well, now let's talk to a young gentleman by the name of Charlie Applewhite. Charlie, the last time we entertained you as a guest on the Wrigley CBS show, you were um, part of the great uh, armed forces, and I noticed by the color of the and the cut of the drape you still are. I still am, but I'm promoted now, if you've noticed. Howard. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> PFC, one stripe. That's right. You're going to stand long enough to become a fellow with Colonel uh, Chickens on the shoulder blades? No, those fellows have to work for about 20, 30 <laughs> years, and I don't think I'll be around that long. No, I hour. think show business is demanding that you come back in a big hurry. Charlie, I think as a matter of fact, if uh, memory serves me, you were sitting on a barracks bunk someplace down in the southeast part of these great United States. When That's we right. Talked. Uh, it was Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, and the station at Fort Smith, Arkansas, helped us do the remote, That's and they right. put a transmitter right there in the barracks, and the, some of the officers from PIO, Public Information Office, uh-huh. there, and, and uh, well, the only thing different about doing this interview, it, it was about a year ago that we did the last one, and uh, instead of being just right across the mic from each other, we were about 1,400, 1400 miles, miles apart. apart. But apart. it was very interesting talking to you, and I know that you told me then that uh, you were in basic or just finished basic, and it was a new and a rather exciting life that you were leading. I suppose by this time, though, you've had almost enough of the Army, haven't you, as a way to work? Well, yeah, Howard, in a sense, the Army's been very good to me, you know, by letting me more or less continue in the sure. business that I've been in. But, of course, my first love is show business, and I will be very, very happy when I can return. Well, when is that, Charlie? Uh, Well, I've just got in a little more than a year now, Howard, so I have a little less than a year to do now, about 11 more months. Good. Well, I have seen you on a number of uh, network radio, television shows, I've um, heard you on records and so forth. Is there no longer a stipulation when you sign up with the uncle that uh, you can have outside sources of income? Well, yes. There were uh, two regulations that formally prevented it, and they have both been abolished. One of them was that, you you know, the old ruling that you couldn't earn more than $90 from uh, a month from non-appropriated sources. That was yes. knocked out in November of 1956. And then uh, there's another Army regulation, uh, 600-195, that permits off-duty employment as long as you can get a letter from your employer stating that you're not interfering with a normal uh, run of civilian employment. In other words, as long as you're not knocking a civilian out of a job. Yes. Well, now, you're in the form of, do they still call it special services? No, I'm with what they call a recruiting publicity center, Howard. It's Eddie Fisher's old job, actually. You know, we do the radio shows and the te- Oh, and incidentally, I have two new television shows that are going to be premiering around June. Is that right? One of them is, uh, I think it's very timely. It's a country and western show starring all the stars of the Grand Ole Opera. You know, uh, Ferlin Husky, we oh, have sure. him in the show. Sure. Of course, I'm just the MC on this show because I don't sing country and western, but... Uh, well, will you sing on the show, though, from time to time? Charlie? No, not on that one. On the other one, uh, a half-hour variety show called Get Set Go featuring Army talent. That it, The little show is supposed to take place like a, a rehearsal in the service club. You know, I will be the yeah. singing host on that Well, now, show. this means, of course, no additional income to you. Oh, no, I don't uh, get the Army paid. wouldn't pay you, and you, you can't be sponsored by anybody no, no. commercially. Well, now, what about uh, the return to show business? When you do return, chances are you've had a chance to sit there in the quietude of a barracks and figure out a, a self-inventory or personal inventory. What are your plans going to be as soon as you relieve yourself of this and put on the mufti? Well, actually, Howard, I can't really say because I don't know exactly what position my career will be in at the time. Of course, I mean, I might get lucky and have a hit record in the time being, but if I don't, I'm a realist about my business, and I realize being away from folks, you know, for two years, a lot of people have forgotten about me. I'm sorry they have, but, I mean, let's be just plain truthful, they have. And uh, I don't know whether I'll try to start back through nightclubs and work up and go into television. Now, you know, before I entered service, I had a couple of offers to do movies. Mm-hmm. And and that's something that I think that would bring me back real fast, you sure know, would. even if it was just a small part in the movie. 
and uh, uh, I would like to do them. Well, the reason I ask the question is because I know that in this past year you've done a couple of dramatic shows on television. I wonder whether or not your attack or your bent was towards the dramatic uh, operation rather than just straight singing in clubs and theaters. Well, I figure that a singer can't last forever, Howard, mm -hmm. especially with nowadays as fickle as the public especially seems to be. Especially with Laryngitis making the rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, uh, I just want to uh, once again jog the memory of our listeners before we play your record. You're the young boy who about, uh, what was it, three, four years ago stormed into the office of Mr. Milton Burl and said, Mr. Burl, I can sing if you'll just listen. And Mr. Burrow was so delighted with your work that he put you on his show, and you were on for a great number of weeks and became a great star of radio and television. Is that about right? Well, that's about right, That's Howard. the story. Did you ever see Uncle Milty anymore? Oh, yes. I saw him. The last time I saw him, however, has been quite a while ago. It was in December when he was playing Ben Maxick's Town and Country, uh -huh. you know. Well, he's, he's, a, he's been playing nightclubs. He's yeah. a great gentleman. I like him just as much as I know that you do. Well, let's uh, salute, then, a member of the Armed Forces, PFC Charlie Applewhite. And here is his brand new RKO unique record called You Can't Escape the Blues. You hear a whistle blow and want to go away from all the people and the places you know. No matter what road you might choose, you can't escape the blues. Your friends will ask you down to do the town. And you may think that you'll forget by running around. But if you go or you refuse, you can't escape the blues. Cause when the one that you trusted has broken your heart and you can't get adjusted, your world's torn apart. You try to pick up the pieces, but you just can't start. Then you'll know misery. You'll think if you set sail, they'll lose your trail. And you can free your spirit that seems locked up in jail. You might as well forget the cruise. You can't escape the blues. Escape the blues Cause when the one that you trust Has broken your heart And you can't get adjusted Your world's torn apart You try to pick up the pieces But you just can't stop Then you'll know misery You'll think if you said sail Well, record of the blues, that's called You Can't Escape the Blues, done by Charlie Applewhite. Well, Charlie, I wish you'd prove to all of our Wrigley Spearman Chewing Gum listeners that you are really a southerner from Texas and say something southern in Texas to me. Will you do that for me, Charlie boy? Sure will, Howie. Oil wells, you all, and sugar. Thank you. That proves it, Charlie. The best of luck to you in your career. I sincerely hope that you return to the uh, civilian clothes and the garb real soon and make your re-entry into show business. I know it'll be auspicious. Thank you all. Thank you all. Well, anyway, our time is all up. We've been here for Wrigley Spearman Chewing Gum, and whether you're a Texan or someone from Connecticut, doesn't make any difference. Whether you're from Florida or from the great uh, coast of California or up around Portland and Oregon, I hope that you all enjoy Wrigley Spearman. It's a swell product. We'll see you tomorrow. Now, the star of our show, Joe Foss, friends. Be sure to join Howard tomorrow when his guest will be Georgie Shaw on the CBS Radio Network. WBBM Chicago.